Awesome. Okay, I think we're live. Great. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Amber Plaxon, and I'm the education coordinator for the Bronx River Alliance. And I'm here to teach you about Earth Art. Um, this is an initiative that we started a little while ago, and we're just being we're just now starting to be able to um, move forward with it. And we're so excited to share it with you. Basically, Earth Art is just a commitment from the Bronx River Alliance to you, um, and also a little bit of a contest to see how you can change your recycled goods into art um, using anything you find, um, maybe collecting trash on the Bronx River, making it clean first and making it into an art piece. Um, it's super exciting stuff and we want to hear from you and see what kind of art you've created uh, from trash that you found or recycled goods in your home and things like that um, just to kind of come together and make a really fun craft. And yeah, so if you want to participate in the contest, we are actually going to be collecting these via social media. So if you use the hashtag EarthArt, um, you can be potentially featured on our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we can show off your art and how you made it. So that'll be super exciting. Um, so today, I just want to share a little bit about uh, waste in America and specifically just waste during the holidays. I think it's really important to acknowledge that the holidays are a very big conduit for, for waste and um, you know, gift wrapping, a, a lot of food waste, organic waste. We've got, you know, just anything that falls under the category of waste during like the Christmas season, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all of those things. Um, it just really piles up over the time, right? Um, so in America specifically, Americans throw away 25% more trash during the holidays between the Thanksgiving and New Year's period. Um, and that that's the equivalent to about 25 million tons of extra garbage or 1 million tons per week, which is insane. Um, so we're really trying to cut back on that, um, especially if you don't know already, the Bronx River does historically have um, a history of waste in it. And we're still feeling the, the effects of that today from the 1970s when they started cleaning up the river till now. We're still nowhere near done, um, but we are focusing a lot on creating uh, more of a, an avenue to reduce waste starting in the home, um, as opposed to you know going having to clean it up after the fact, right? So today we are going to be making two different crafts. Um, one of them is a toilet paper tube wreath, and the other one is painted jars. So I love to give handmade gifts for Christmas. Um, that's what I celebrate. And um, what better way to show someone you care about them through like baked goods and things like that. So we have a couple of jars here that we're gonna paint. I've got this one. These are just old pasta jars from, um, from Trader Joe's. Um, and yeah, I don't like to throw these away. I usually use these for like drinking water or drinking juice or whatever. Um, but today we're gonna make them into little gift jars. And then I have a third one here. I have all different shapes and sizes and with lids too. I think lids are really important as well. Um, and then I also have toilet paper tubes. I have an abundance of them. I've been collecting them for this purpose. I've got paper towel and toilet paper tubes. And we're gonna be using those to make a flower wreath. I don't have an example of one right now, um, but I do have the little pieces that we're gonna need. Um, so if you are following along or if you want, um, I'm going to give a tutorial right now of what you need. So if you are a student, um, please work with an adult for this because we're going to need a hot glue gun. So I've got my hot glue gun here. Um, I've got some paint markers. This is for everything. I've got some paint markers and I also have a jar of, this is also a reused salsa jar. So that's a really great way to reuse it. Use it for your brushes. So I've got a jar of brushes, and then I've got all these different colored paints. So I've got um, some white paint, green, red, brown, yellow, and last but not least, black. So I've got all these different colored paints here. Um, so then for the wreaths, you're going to need, again, the hot glue gun, and any size of tube paper tube. You also want to get the toilet paper off, um, but you've got tubes here. 
And we're gonna cut the tubes into these little pieces. Um, these kind of resemble like little flower pieces, so that's exciting. Um, and then I recommend if you have any, so we're doing a lot of ordering online right now because of um, COVID. So I'm sure you have a cardboard box nearby. So if you do have one, um, grab it because we're gonna need to cut off little strips from here to make the inner circle of the toilet paper tube reads. So I already have my strips pre-cut, um, but you're basically gonna take them, and it's a, little, it's a little bendy right now, but you're gonna take them and make them into a circle like this. Um, and then for the jars, all you need are the paint brushes, the paint, the paint markers, and some jars. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I will be answering questions throughout. If you have any questions about the Bronx River, we will be, we being me, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Um, so let's get started. I think I'm gonna start with the jar painting because it is probably best to let it dry while I'm doing the wreaths so that I can show you after when it's dry. Um, let's see, which one do I wanna, I think I'm gonna do this one with the lid because it's, it's already ready for me. Um, you also wanna try and get the adhesive bits off. I have not done that for this, so I'm just gonna paint around it for right now. Um, but that just helps because it's not, the paint's not gonna stick there. So you wanna get that off. I recommend using a little bit of coconut oil and then you, you kind of rub the coconut oil on and you soak it in a bath of hot dish soap water. Um, then you take it out and then rub it again with coconut oil and then it'll, it'll be all good. So I think for this, um, let's see. Oh, I also have, let me grab it from down here. Sorry, working from home, I have a lot of stuff hidden in different places so that I can grab it very easily. Where is the, oh, I know where it is. Okay, so since I've been getting a lot of mail, um, I've been saving these cardboard pieces to use them as palettes for my paint. I don't personally have a paint palette here. Um, I am an artist, but I, I don't have a palette because I don't traditionally work with paint. But I'm gonna use this as a palette so that it's a lot easier for me to um, paint my jars and I'm reusing something. Instead of buying a plastic palette that'll probably break in a couple years, I'm just gonna reuse this and then probably use it as an art piece and paint over it. So that's exciting. All right, so all we're gonna do, I'm gonna put down some red, shake it up, put down some red paint. I only use a little bit for now because I don't want to waste the paint either. Some red, I'm going to do some white. I think I'm going to make some flowers on this jar. I really like flowers. So I'm going to do that. There's the white. A little more of that. A little sneaky bit of white. And then some green. How can you go wrong? Let's do that. And then I think I'm going to take some brown because I'll probably be mixing some colors as well. So I've got my brown. Ah, let's do some yellow too. <laughs> I'm also going to be using my paint pens most likely. So um, those will come in handy a little bit later. So these are all my colors. I like to always, if you're new to painting, um, this becomes an art lesson. But if you're new to painting, you always want to put all your paints at the top so that you have room on the bottom to mix, um, and so that when you take the paint off, you're not mixing it into other colors. So it's all just gonna be centralized at the top. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna move, I, I have a very small desk, so you're gonna see me moving things around a whole lot. Ooh, there it goes. <laughs> all right, so let's start with, I'm gonna take a half inch flat brush, um, and any paint brushes will do. These are watercolor brushes, but I'm using acrylic paint, so don't tell anybody. Um, I'm gonna take the lid off first, and I'm actually gonna paint the lid and let it dry while we, while we wait, or while we paint. And take these off. Again, small space, making things work as we go. Okay. Please stay there, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the lid white, I think. Um, and I'm just gonna use this half inch brush. Just paint right on there. Oh, 
I got paint all over my shirt now. Oh no, oh, that's okay. Oh well. See, this is why you always want to wear a paint smock, but I did not do that just now. So it's okay. You don't want to wear like a paint smock or an apron or something, because if not, you end up like me with paint on your shirt. And you probably can't see it in the camera, but it is like <laughs> really bad. Oh well, I'll just have to improvise that. Maybe I'll put some black paint on it to cover it up. All right, so at this point, I'm already getting paint on my hands. Um, so you can just put the lid down and kind of paint it. I know you can't see, but I'll show you after. Or, actually, I'm going to put my fingers on the inside like this and then paint all around. And this is not going to cover up the gold color just yet. Um, we're going to have to do a couple more layers so that it covers it up. But this is just a priming layer so that you can get the idea. So I'm gonna let that dry, it's drying. Um, make sure this paint is dry on my hands before I grab the jar or else we're gonna have a disaster. All right, that should be fine. So I've got my jar um, and I think I'm gonna do some flowers. What kind of flowers do I wanna do is the question. Let's see, let's get this paint off the brush. You know, the, the other great thing about making things from home is really just that, not only that personal feel that you get from getting a handmade gift, but also just being able to put love into something I think is great. And also being able to reduce your waste in the meantime is also just such a fantastic thing. Um, such a fantastic feeling too when you tell that person that you made that out of something that you just had in your home. Like it's really impressive as well. Um, and even if you're not an artist, you're just a random, you know, a normal person. I mean, artists can be normal people, but you know, if you haven't grown up with art skills, I think it's okay because this is just such an easy craft. Um, and even if you're just getting into art now, it's such an easy craft. It's so simple. You can do any kind of thing you want to do. Um, and it's always super fun to get a gift from a friend that's personal. So let's see. Let's do, I already have paint everywhere. How did that happen? All right, let's get some red. I'm gonna get some red. And I'm just gonna do little flower petals. So I have this, this six round brush, it's from Artify. Um, and you just kind of use the brush's shape to make the little flower petals. Ooh, I just touched my hot glue gun. Yeah. So just go all the way around with that. I'll show you if I can. I wish I had another camera. Yeah. Yeah, there's one flower. So you're just gonna do that. You're gonna continue to do that all the way around um, until you get something that you like. Yeah, and I, I really can't believe that 25 million tons of extra trash, so 25% more, is made during the holidays. That's insane. Um, I think it's really important to know that holiday seasons, you know, it's not... Um, what was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. Um, it's not something to be ashamed of when you're, you know, you're giving gifts and it's, it's really nice, but also just try to be mindful of your gifts every time because it all adds up in the end um, and you don't know what's going to go where. Um, I've seen countless things in the Bronx River from toys to, to styrofoam pellets to coolers. I mean, I don't know where these things are coming from and, you know, we work on that data, so I will eventually, but it's so crazy to me that someone's little toy could end up in the Bronx River. Something that someone could have gotten for a holiday. All right, so we've got four flowers on there now. We're gonna keep going. Just keep painting. This is also a fun thing to do with, um, with kids as well, if you have kids. Um, I think it's really special to be able to uh, make a, like a cookie jar for someone or, you know, for the grandparents or like making, um, 
something for their teacher. You know, I know right now we're in a little bit of a weird time, but you know, this video is going to be on YouTube. Um, and if you're not subscribed to us already, you should, uh, it's just Bronx River Alliance at, on YouTube. And we're going to be continuing our little craft series, um, throughout 2021. I think in the spring of 2021 is where we're going to wrap it up. But these are great things to do with kids. And if you have kids who are crafty or just want to learn more about art, this is a great opportunity for them to learn, as well as an opportunity for them to learn about sustainable gift options and sustainable art options as well. Um, not only can you do things with things you find in your home, but maybe we'll have like, we can have like a dedicated day to go find trash to make into treasure, which is something that I'm really an activist on. Yeah, this looks pretty good, right? We'll just keep going until we've made our way all the way around. I'm also gonna leave some space because I'm gonna write something on here. Um, I'm also heavily taking inspiration. I have a cookie jar in my other room um, and this is definitely being inspired by that. And I thrifted that cookie jar too, so it's a bit vintage, if you will. Yeah, I also have been trying to remember not to bring my fingers above this area because if I do, I'm gonna touch the paint that hasn't dried yet. So <laughs> we're gonna just keep going. I think I'm gonna do one more at the bottom here and I think that's a good place to stop so that I can write what I wanna write on here. I should have, ideally, I should have written this before, but maybe I'll let it dry before I continue. Maybe I'll do that because that seems like the more responsible thing to do instead of trying to draw something else while this is drawing, but I think it looks pretty good so far. Um, if you're watching, let me, know, let me know what you think. If you're following along, I would love to see a picture of yours. Um, but yeah, this is our flower gift jar for right now. We're gonna put that, I'm actually gonna add some elements that I need to dry before I continue. So let me just wash this brush, my water. Again, I'm using, if you're just joining, I'm using a reusable salsa, not reusable, but I guess, yeah reusable salsa jar for my water for my paintbrushes. And I'm gonna dry my brush off because you do not wanna use water with acrylic paint um, unless you're experienced because then it just becomes a whole big mess and then your jar gets ruined. So we don't wanna do that. Um, so I'm gonna actually take some green, no, some white. Let's do some white. <clears throat> Let's make some snowflakes or something. Let's get, let's get creative. So I'm going to do some little dots to represent snow. Hopefully we get snow this year. I would love to have some snow in New York City. Yeah, so we're just going around and creating these little dots. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, to represent some little white snowflakes. And if you're watching, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, if you just joined us, we're making some um, gift jars, cookie jars, whatever you want to call them. Um, just kind of going with the flow here and making some fun upcycled holiday gift ideas. If you have any ideas for upcycled things that you've made or something that you would like to make, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it. Um, and I also love hearing from everyone about your ideas and how you've upcycled something. Okay, I've got all my dots. You can kind of see it. I'm sorry, I'm backlit right now. Um, and then the next step is going to be, I think, green. I'm going to do some green. Okay, just washing my brush. Going back into the paint. One more time, I have a lot of green here. I also, here's a tip. I like to make the tip of the paintbrush, you can see it's kind of frayed right now after being in the, in the jar. So I like to just reshape those, um, especially when I'm going in and doing dots. It's really important so that the, the tip is nice and pointy. I almost grabbed the whole jar with my hand. That would have been really bad. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna just put, so I'm gonna do, I think, I'm gonna make this kind of like holly. I'm gonna do like little three dots on the flowers. 
So like around the flowers. Oh, this is tedious. Yes. Okay. If you're just joining, hi, welcome. We're just making some upcycled crafts. Um, if you have any questions about the Bronx River Alliance or the Bronx River in general, or if you want to hear more about um, waste and waste alternatives, let me know. My name is Amber, for anyone watching. Okay, so I'm just making like three little dots on each of the flowers. I think it looks very nice. And I would buy this cookie jar, honestly. And I also try to put them in like altering positions so that it's a little bit more of a random pattern on the jar. So that you can kind of play around with your creativity here. And this is so much fun because also, like I said earlier, this is such a fun thing to do with kids. And I, I love to see what kids come up with when you're doing arts and crafts with them because they have such big ideas. And I mean, this is obviously I'm doing this because it's such a simple design on here, but I feel like kids will just go crazy. And I love that. I'm shaking a little bit because this is so tedious, but I think we have completed our flower section. Um, hi, Francesca. I see your comment. Beautiful. I use a similar glass jar to grow my avocado plants. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a great question. Oil paint on glass. Um, I'm not sure, but I think it should be okay. You might just have to let it dry for a longer time because oil paint traditionally on canvas takes a longer time to dry. So I wouldn't doubt that on any other surface, um, it might be a little hard to, to dry. So try it out though, let us know because I would love to know. Um, yeah, this is the excuse the adhesive part. I'm gonna take that off, I promise. Um, but we've got our little holly looking flowers. And again, here in this blank, in this blank space, I'm gonna write something with um, a gold acrylic pen. Um, so yeah, awesome. So I'm gonna let this dry. And again, if you're just joining, we're just making some upcycled crafts. Uh, Francesca, one of our viewers is saying that she uses it to um, grow your avocado plants. So that's great. I think that's also a great thing to do. You can also even, oh, this is such a good idea. You can gift an avocado plant, like a starter to people in decorated jars. I think that would be so much fun. Um, so I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna move on to the next craft which is toilet paper tube wreaths. So again, for this, you're gonna need a hot glue gun, um, or you can use a glue stick, Elmer's glue, it just takes a little while to dry. You're gonna need some cardboard um, cut into, I would say this is about half an inch of uh, strips, so two half an inch strips from a piece of cardboard that are like, I would say this is about 10 inches long. Um, I kind of just eyeball it. Uh, however big you want your circle to be is a good meter of, or a good way to measure. So it's gonna end up looking like this once we put it together. And then you're gonna need an abundance of toilet paper or paper towel tubes so that you can cut them up into little pieces, which I will show you in a second. You can cut them up into little pieces like this and these will be the base of your, or not the base, but like the, the decorative element to your wreath. So we're gonna start by, oh, also I wanna mention you can paint these beforehand so that you have like a white wreath or a red wreath or a green wreath, whatever you want. Um, I did not do that, so I'm gonna paint it later, but I am going to show you how to put it together. So that's what we're doing. So for these, you're gonna take your two strips, you're gonna make sure they're the same length. So these are about the same length and they're about a half an inch thick on either side. Then you're gonna take about, again, a half an inch and put it over another half inch on the other side. And you're going to take your glue gun that is very hot. Also, if you are working with children, I recommend that you do this part for them if you're an adult, because it can get very hot and very painful with hot glue guns. I know from experience. I do need to put another glue stick in here though, so we'll do that in a second. But you're just gonna press it together. You're gonna hang on tight here and let it dry. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're making some toilet paper tube holiday wreaths that are giftable and wearable on our doors. So that's very exciting. Okay, that's about dry. I'm gonna actually put in another glue stick for some pressure here on my glue gun. Oh my gosh. There we go. 
Now she's ready. Okay. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this strip of cardboard that you've created and then you're going to wrap it to whatever diameter you wish your wreath to be. So I'm going to actually make mine, I'm going to overlap here a little bit and then I'm going to trim it so that it is even with the other side. So you don't want it to be like completely overlapped because then you have uneven, uneven sides. I almost dropped my glue gun again. I'm a mess. It's fine. All right. I'm going to cut it again here so that it's a little shorter. And that's why we always want to make sure they're the same length at the beginning so that you can have room to trim um, and make it the way you would like it. So again, another half inch on either side. I'm going to take your glue gun that mysteriously wants to fall all the time. Put some glue on there. Put the glue gun back safely. <laughs> and then press and hold to dry. So once we have this circle, we are pretty much ready to continue the crafting process with the wreath. So I've got this here. I think it's ready. Yeah. Yeah, looks ready. All right, so now um, you're gonna wanna cut your toilet paper tubes into little kind of like almond shapes. They kind of like look like eyes, almond shapes. So how you're gonna do that is you're gonna take, I'm gonna take one that's clean and not full of toilet paper. Let's, let's just take a paper towel tube. So I have a paper towel tube here and I'm going to fold it in half, just kind of like squish it together. So squish the, the hole shut. You're gonna press it all the way down. Super easy, this is super fun and tactile for kids as well if you're doing this with kids. Um, and super engaging for motor control as well. So now you have your flat toilet paper tube or paper towel tube, whatever you're working with. And you wanna measure about a quarter inch for every strip. So you're just gonna cut all the way down until you reach the bottom of your tube. And these are also really fun because you can personalize them as well. Um, if you have watched our videos for a while, I did do a live um, wreath making for Mother's Day. Um, and it was the same thing with toilet paper tubes, just making a wreath. And I also drew some flowers um, to glue on to the wreath as well. And that was really fun and really relaxing. <laughs> Especially because Mother's Day was, you know, during the summer, the spring months. And that's when COVID was at its peak. Right now, we're just here to enjoy the holiday crafting. So if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Um, I would love to answer your questions. Um, if you've been a friend of the Bronx River Lines for a long time, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Again, if, you, if you've ever done any recycled art or upcycled crafts, let me know. I would love to hear what you've created. Um, another thing I want to mention is that we are doing an earth art contest. I mentioned this at the very beginning of the stream. Um, and essentially, if you use the hashtag earth art, you will be able to be entered into a contest to be featured on our social media. So if you recreate one of these things, um, please, please, please post it on social media and tag us and use the hashtag EarthArt so we can see it and repost it because we want to see all the beautiful art pieces you've been making um, during these holidays. So now I've got quite a bit of toilet paper tube pieces, so I'm just going to start gluing them on. Um, so you want to glue them on with the, the flat side. So you don't want to glue the, the, let me show you a little bit better. You don't want to glue like the, the thin side down because it's just going to fall right off. So you want to glue it with this little flat piece down onto the, the cardboard like this. But you don't want to glue the whole thing because these need to stand up, right? So you just want to glue it kind of sideways like this. So I'll show you. So you're going to take, you're also going to start on this layered section here so that it's just the first one that you use. So you're going to take your glue gun carefully again. You're going to just put a little dot here on the on the cardboard ring 
And then you're going to place just a little bit like that. Yeah, and then hold it down. And we're gonna do this for every single little piece of wreath. Okay, that's hot. So again, be very careful while you're doing this. I'm actually gonna move so that my glue gun is on my right side so that it's not my hand that's knocking it over all the time as it has been. Okay, cool. All right, so again, we're just gonna do another little glue gun dot right under, so you're gonna go right under here because you want them to fit together as pieces and hold this up so it doesn't get stuck. And then you're gonna just pop that one right in the little crevice right there. And then it becomes kind of like a, like a shape, a pattern. So we're gonna just keep going until we're all the way around. Um, and again, if you're just tuning in, we are making some upcycled crafts. So using what we already have at home to make gifts for ourselves or loved ones. It's super exciting. All right, this one, ooh, this one I'm gonna have to hold. It is very hot with very thin toilet paper tubes, so please, please, please be careful. And if you're doing with this, this with kids, you can use Elmer's glue. Um, it just takes longer to dry. And I, I just like things, I'm impatient, so I like <laughs> to use the quick glue, like this one. All right, again, we're gonna just do another dot. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. This is a time to relax. Take a little break from the day and do some crafts. Because it's so important right now to take a mental health break, especially during a busy holiday season. You know, if you're stressed, I think crafting is such a great way to take the mind off of things as well. Um, I mean, right now I'm really just thinking about not burning myself, so that's sort of relaxing. Because my mind cannot be anywhere else. Okay, this feels very Bob Ross of me. If anyone knows who that is, I'm sure everybody does. We'd love to be painting a landscape right now or something. Just going all the way around. I did make this pretty big because I do want to use this on my front door. So this one is really going to get put to use. Um, I'm also probably going to send some to some of the lovely ladies in my life. Yeah, and again, you can personalize this for anybody. So if you have someone in your life that, you know, just got a home or, you know, maybe, I don't know, just need some holiday cheer, I think it would be nice to send them a little wreath that you handmade, you know, maybe put their names on it or something. The possibilities are endless. See, we have four viewers now. Welcome, welcome. So excited to have you here. If you have any questions about what I am doing, let me know and I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Um, but at the moment, we are just creating a toilet paper tube wreath. And what's beautiful about these is that they look so, there's such a trend right now, right? With like rustic, crafty, you know, these like craft paper things that cost a fortune, if I might add, in the craft store like Michael's. So if you can make this with something you've already paid a fortune for, like toilet paper, then I think you're really, you're set there. I think that's a great alternative to paying $70 for a wreath when you can make one for however much you've spent on toilet paper in the past year. <laughs> and, you know, make something from the heart. So I'm gonna actually try to push my glue gun. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's working better. It was faltering a little bit. Oh, I lost my grip on this. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I wish I had music playing or something. It'd be so much fun to like jam out to some holiday beats. That would be really nice. But luckily for once, my street is quiet. 
so you can hear exactly what I'm saying. Okay. This looks great so far, right? It's only going to get bigger, so stay tuned. Okay. I got to work quickly. This glue dries very fast. I was not ready for that. I just got this new glue gun the other day. And again, if you're working with kids, you do the glue gun because it's very hot. <laughs> or use Elmer's glue. It just takes a long while to dry. Okay. I made that one a little too skinny. That's okay. I hope whoever is watching, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Um, looks nice outside. I hope you got a chance to go outside today. And if you're following along, I'm so excited to have you here. If you're taking notes too, so this is going to be up on our, um, our YouTube channel and it is going to stay on Facebook. So if you want to watch it later, you can. Um, our YouTube channel, if you just search Bronx River Alliance, you can find it there. Make sure you're subscribed so that we can, you know, you never miss another beat from the Bronx River Alliance. And also be sure to follow us on social media so you know when the next Earth Art is coming up. Um, we are doing these every week through the month of December, which is so exciting because I get to craft on Thursdays in December and show you some alternative upcycled gifts so that you don't have to spend a fortune this holiday season. You just use things that you have in your home. Um, I know money has been super tight for me this year. Um, you know, just in, in terms of also just getting gifts to people across the country because we can't see each other. So this is a very cost effective and fun way to um, make some crafts for people you love. So yeah, be sure to follow us on social media so that you know exactly when these are happening um, because they're happening a few times this December and then we're going to continue it into the spring, but they won't be holiday themed. They'll be, they'll be different. Okay, we're almost done here. I have one more. Let's see. Let's see if I can squeeze this one in here without pulling this one out. <gasps> almost dropped my glue gun again. Okay. All right, so the first part of this is done. I think it looks very good. Definitely a little wispy with the glue, but we can take that off. If you make one of these for Halloween, you use the glue bits and make it like a, a little um, cobweb type deal. All right, so that's done. Um, and we're gonna just, I'm just gonna keep putting flowers on here until I run out. So if you have any questions again, hi, welcome. Um, just let me know in the chat. If you're having a good time, let me know in the chat. If you're enjoying this, um, if you want to see more, please let me know because that helps me gauge how many of these to do. I won't know until someone tells me to stop, so let me know. Oops. Yeah, so for these, you just want to like slide them into the little cracks that have been made by the wedges here. Um, and you just kind of put the glue on the middle. And then put it right in and it becomes an even bigger flower. Okay, it's going to keep going. Again, this is such a relaxing craft. Like, who would have thought that putting toilet paper tubes together, that one's a little too far in. Oh, well, we'll fix it. But who would have thought putting toilet paper tubes together into a wreath would be, like, fun? I don't know if that's just me, but I'm having a lot of fun. Okay. 
Yeah, and again, if you want to decorate these, you can totally paint them before you put them together, or you can paint them afterwards. It depends on what kind of look you're going for. I'm really going for this kind of like, this kind of like raw material look for mine. Did I already put one here? No, I did not, okay. Yeah, I like this kind of like crafty, uh, what's the word? Very like rustic, that's the word I'm looking for. Very like rustic feel to my holiday. You can also, you know what? You can also make ornaments out of this. I didn't even think about that, but I might actually try to make one before this is over. So I'm gonna work quickly here because that would be super fun. Another great way to use um, toilet paper tubes this holiday season is as gift boxes. And I know what you're thinking, you're probably like, what the heck? Gift boxes out of toilet paper tubes? How can you even do that? Um, and I will show you really quick while I'm on the subject. You can make them into little, little pillow boxes. So if you have jewelry you're giving someone or if you wanna give someone some candies, um, this is a great way to do it. You just wrap it up in twine, um, you know, put a little bow on top and tape the sides and it becomes a little gift box. So if you're, again, if you have a lot of toilet paper tubes like I do, then you can make something out of it instead of just throwing them in the recycling. If you're just joining us, I would like to fill you in on a little statistics that I gave earlier. Um, during the holiday season between Thanksgiving and New Year's, about 25% more trash is produced in America. So that's about 25 million tons of garbage that's put out in America during the holiday season, or about 1 million tons, 1 million extra tons per week. Per week. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I keep dropping my glue gun. Dangerous. Um, but yeah, about 1 million extra tons per week, which is a lot of trash. And that's not, that's not great, um, especially when thinking about the Bronx River. We already have quite a trash problem in the Bronx River and we don't want it to get worse. So we really wanna make sure we're diverting our waste into other things. You know, if you absolutely have to throw it away, throw it away. But if you can find another use for it, um, I think this is a great way to do it because then you don't have to throw things away. You feel good about your decisions on the planet um, and you're just contributing to a great cause, you know, the Bronx River doesn't clean itself. Um, we have people out there every single day tirelessly working to improve and restore the river um, and make it a very healthy, ecological and educational resource for the community that it flows in, which is the Bronx. And I think it's super important to respect each other in our community and make sure that we are doing our best to make sure that it is great for everybody. All right, so I'm gonna just keep going. I mean, yeah, like otherwise these, these toilet paper tubes could end up at the bottom of the Bronx River and we don't want that. Okay, we're almost at the end. So excited. I know we have about 15 minutes left, so I wanna make sure that Everything is going in a timely manner, so that's why I'm rushing here. But I think it looks pretty good so far. Let me know if you're still watching. Let me know what you think. Also, I'm so sorry if you can hear that street noise. I don't know what's happening outside. Motorcycles? Last little bit here. I think this is the last one. Yep. Yay. Cool. All right, so this is, I'm gonna keep going because I have a lot of toilet paper tubes to, um, to flesh out here on this wreath, but I'm taking the glue off like little strings of glue so you can see it properly. Hold on, it's stuck to my hand. <laughs> All right, so this is the wreath so far. I think it looks gorgeous. 
Um, I think I want to add a little bit of something in here because this now feels too big unless I keep adding to it. It could also be like a little crown. Um, and I'm also going to use, let me grab my twine. I have some red and white twine here that I just reuse. And you can cut a piece. Let's see, I want it to be like that long. You can cut a piece of that. And then once these are all dry, you can kind of loop it through here. And then hang it. Oops. That was not supposed to happen, but that's fine. No worries. How embarrassing. Um, no, it's okay. So yeah, then you can tie it like this and then it becomes a little hanging wreath. Again, you can make like an ornament, which I think is super cool. Um, let's see if we have some time for that. I think I want to make an ornament now. Oh, let's check on our jar too. Uh, if you've been watching from the beginning, we made a glass painted jar. So we've got this here. And this is a perfect way to give baked goods for Christmas or any holiday that you celebrate. Um, it's pretty dry now. Yeah, it's dry. So this is a great way to give something to someone. I also painted the lid. So now you've got the white lid with the jar. I'm going to repaint this again later. We're running out of time now. But I am going to, it's completely dry. Maybe not. Try oh, slightly. I am going to write a little message on here if I can. Let me make sure my paint pen is not going to explode on me. If you've ever used these, you know they have a tendency to kind of like dribble a little bit. So you want to make sure that that's not going to happen. So I use the Craft Smart paint pens, and these are just acrylic paint pens. They're really nice for writing messages. Um, so I think I'm going to write Mary and Bright. So that's what comes to mind first. So I'm going to go ahead. Can we do the M here? Because the M got a little bit of that weird dribbling thing. This is so cute. Oh, I got to recharge my marker. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add some little flair here too. Wish I had another camera so I could show you exactly what I'm doing, but it's okay. I'm going to do some stars. And some little dots to kind of spice it up. So it doesn't look so plain here in the middle. Okay. Oh, this is so cute. Definitely gonna give this as a gift to someone, but I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can find, I have some white tissue paper down here. Let's grab that. Okay, so I've got the white tissue paper and then the jar. So you can see a little bit of a glare. But yeah, I think it looks good. I think it's perfect for a gift. Um, for anyone. Oh, maybe oh, I have an idea. So you can see it better. Take a piece of this. Stuff it in the jar. Don't worry, I'm going to reuse this um, piece of tissue paper. But here, here's the completed jar. I think there's a little bit of a glare here. Let me turn off my computer screen, maybe that'll help. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks good. So you've got your writing, you can even write to and from. Um, and I also encourage you to seal this with um, some kind of sealant. Um, I personally use Mod Podge. Uh, so this is the one that I prefer to use, and it's also really great for me having issues with my computer. There. Okay, there we go. So um, I apologize for that. My computer was freaking out on me. There we go. 
So yes, you want to make sure that you're sealing it so that when um, your friends and family go to wash it, it doesn't come off. You want to use a waterproof gloss. So Mod Podge or I think the the one that I like to use for like washable things is the environmental, like the environmental friendly Mod Podge. So then you just want to seal it up and then you get your beautiful little jar. So again, this is a fun craft to do with kids. I think they would really enjoy this and giving, you know, cookies to someone, maybe their teacher or whoever. Um, also when it's safe. So make sure you're only doing that if it's safe. But yeah, I like the jar. I'm going to keep it and give it to someone I love. Um, and as for the wreath, this is the completed wreath. I am going to add some other elements to it later on. So it's about, it's about the size of my head. And I think it's really nice. So let's make a really quick ornament. I want to, let me get, while we have some time, where is my little cardboard? Here it is, it's on my keyboard. So I'm gonna cut this little strip here. Um, I'm gonna cut it smaller. Cut it about halfway. And then, oh, I still have some packaging on here. Take that off. So I'm gonna have a little, little round thing. And then just glue that together. Okay. I hope if you've been here this whole time, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, upcycling earth art session. Uh, we are going to be doing two more of these in the month of December. We're going to be doing one next Thursday, December 10th, and it is going to be uh, Michelle Lupke. She's going to be making um, little egg carton, I guess they're called like shrinky dinks. So you use your egg carton, you cut them into flowers and you bake them and it shrinks down into like a little flower shape, which is really cool. Uh, I think that's really unique as well. I feel like that hasn't been done before and I really commend her for that. So yeah, definitely check that out. On December 10th, we're gonna be doing some other crafts with Michelle. And then on December 17th, I am going to be back on here doing um, some junk mail art, which is exciting. I'm going to be taking some of my junk mail and turning it into an art piece. So if you have junk mail, I know you do, because I have a lot. You can definitely, definitely take part in that because it's so easy, it's so fun. Um, and it's just a good time. And if you have kids, I encourage you to bring them along on this little crafting journey. I think it's super fun, super kid friendly as well. And I think they'll have fun making crafts, especially if you teach them and they make um, some little crafts for you if you're their parent or their aunt or whatever. I think it's a great time. So I'm just gonna finish up this ornament here. Oh, hi Pam, thank you. Okay, hopefully I have enough to finish the ornament. Okay, almost done. I have two more. I think I'm going to make it. So happy we got to make three crafts in one hour. That's so, so many. So many more than I thought I would get to. Okay, I have room for one more little, I have one, one more little flower bit here. Oh, my finger got stuck to the ornament. So I'm going to take my toilet paper tube. I'm going to cut it until you have some space. And then pop that right here on this last little bit. And let me not burn myself again. Okay. And there's your little Christmas ornament to match your wreath. So if you're looking for something like this, you can totally do this with your leftovers if you have leftovers from the wreath. So this is the wreath, and here's your little Christmas ornament. I'm thinking I put this here and make it kind of like a double, you can kind of see it better like this, make it like a double layered wreath of some sorts. So I think 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna, I have, again, I have a bag full of toilet paper tubes. So I think I'm gonna make a ton of these because I don't have ornaments on my tree yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna capitalize on my upcycled materials. But I've got all of that. And then the last, again, I'm gonna show you again the, the jar that we made. So this is the jar. It just says Mary and Bright. You can write whatever you want on there. You can write someone's name. You can write um, to and from. You can write cookies. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Yeah. So anything, I don't know if you can read it. I don't know if it's showing up the right way, but it says Mary and Bright. And then I've got all these little flowers and little white dots and stuff. And I painted the lid white. I'm gonna repaint it because they can still see the the expiration date of my uh, marinara sauce still on here. So <laughs> just kind of cover it up. But thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I really had so much fun making these crafts with you um, and just taking a little break from the day. So if you have any questions um, about the crafts or if you want access to this video, um, if you have any questions, please email me at education at bronxriver.org. Um, if you are a teacher and you're looking for a similar kind of field trip for your students, we are offering virtual field trips right now um, for a lower cost. So please check out our website. Um, we'll leave the links in the chat below and also in the description of this video once we post it on Facebook. So again, if you have any questions, please email me. My name is Amber and I'm happy to answer any of your crafting questions, um, any of your waste questions, upcycling, Bronx River related questions, I'm here for you. Um, and if you want access to this video after the fact, please make sure you're following us here on Facebook, or you like our Facebook page, and make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss another beat from the Bronx River Alliance. And thank you so much for being here. I had such a great time. And I hope that if you're crafting along with me now, if you're watching this video later, you have so much fun while you do it because this was fun for me. So again, happy holidays. I'll see you all. Um, we'll have another one of these on December 10th and then another one from me on December 17th. So I'll see you all then. Thank you.